Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching, showing up, hanging out with me today, and all that stuff. I hope you're having a great day. Thanks for watching, and in today's video, I'm gonna be comparing two filters on the left, in the left corner. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, so I'm gonna be comparing split toning with color balance. These are two of my favorites for color adjustments in Luminar. Luminar 2018, Luminar Pluto before that, Luminar Neptune, you know, whatever. It's They're both in the old, old versions. They're also in the current versions, Luminar 3 and Luminar Flex. I'm currently in Luminar Flex. Anyway, um, whew, okay, so these are two of my favorite color filters. As I said, I did a video recently uh, talking about my five favorite color filters, and these were two of them listed. Um, I'm not here to just rehash that video. I did, however, want to point out the differences between these two filters because at first glance uh, they seem very similar you can change colors around in the highlights and shadows or whatever so let's jump into it and uh, see what we can figure out here so here's my photo and i gotta admit i, I love this photo uh, it's haystack rock in cannon beach oregon it's a long exposure uh, just the sun was behind it and the clouds were streaking i, I don't know i'm just kind of fired up every time i look at it um just a personal preference. I just like long exposures. I need to go shoot more of them. Anyway, okay, shut up, Jim. So let's focus. Um, I need to focus, not you. Okay, so split toning. Um, that's right here. I've just got both filters added and only in the order they appeared in the filter catalog. It's not because I like one better than the other. I think you know if you've seen any of my videos that I love both of these a lot, right? So, okay. Highlights and shadows. So split toning is basically you, you pick a color for your highlights and you can also pick a color for your shadows. And then you drag the saturation slider for each one individually to get as much color, uh, as much of that color that you've chosen for the highlights or the shadows. And that's it. So it's basically pick your highlights colors, uh, color and saturate it. Pick your uh, shadow color and saturate it. The cool thing is you also have this balance so if you want to kind of adjust it, you know, well, if you're tweaking it and you can't quite get it right, you can move the balance back and forth between shadows and highlights. So if you drag it towards shadows, that just means more of that shadow color you chose is going to show up. And vice versa, if you drag it towards the highlights over here with the balance slider, more of the color you chose for the highlights is going to show up. And the other great thing is at the top here, you have an amount slider, and that's basically just an opacity slider for this filter. So I can do all these color adjustments and say I like it, but it's a little over the top. I can just take the amount down and it reduces both highlights and shadows uh, by the same extent. So let's get going. On a sunset, by the way, I use split toning on sunsets all the damn time because you just come over here and you pick your little happy color for highlights and then you start dragging that slider to the right because man, I want that hot. Ooh, yeah, I just like that already. So. Um, you can see that I just added a bunch of this kind of creamsicle looking orangey kind of color uh, into the highlights. So there it was where the sky was pretty much just blue. And now you're getting the sky and the reflection um, showing up a bit more of this kind of orangey color, which I think looks pretty cool. What I'll often do then uh, as a counterbalance is to come over here and take shadows. And I usually put it like around 220 or so, somewhere like that. Uh, and that's kind of the blue range. And then I'll start pulling that up. And that's for the shadows. I don't really know why I do that other than I just like that opposite play of kind of the warm colors and the cool colors because if I go all warm, right, not really the look I'm going for. Um, if I kind of go yellow, still in the warm range, not really the look I'm going for. But I, I like the artistic stuff, right? You've, well, maybe you haven't seen my videos, but if you have, you know I like color and I like the artistic stuff. So I think the blue and the shadows with the warmer colors and the highlights looks pretty freaking cool. Now, no other filters, I'm not diving in. This is not the exact thing I would do with this photo. I would use some other filters as well. I'm not getting into that. I just wanna compare these two filters. So that's split toning. Now here's the balance. Um, if I wanna go more shadows, which remember is the blue, I go this way and you can see the photo becomes more blue, right? If I want highlights, I wanna go this way, I get more of that highlights color. Um, and I can double click one of those and go back to the middle where it's evenly balanced. Here's the amount slider. Let's say I like what I've got, but guess what? It's a little too saturated. Now, you can take the saturation slider down with either you know the highlights or shadows saturation slider, 
and that's usually what I do. Uh, in fact, I rarely use the amount slider, but it's there and it's good to have. So I could just take it down. Like maybe I like that because I like big colors and it's expressive and kind of awesome looking. But you know, maybe you don't like it as much. Maybe you want to take it down, but you like the color range and it looks good. But hey, Jim, it's too much. Okay, so maybe the hundred needs to go to eighty-five, right? There I am at eighty-five. A little tamer implementation. I'm going to hundred, but. Um, you don't have to go to 100. So that's how split toning works, super powerful. I use it a lot on a lot and on a lot of photos. I love it. I'm gonna turn it off and go back. I'm not gonna reset it, I wanna leave it where I am, but I wanna turn it off and um, go into color balance. Now color balance is different even though it kinda looks the same because over here you got shadows, you have midtones also and highlights. Whereas if you recall in split tone, you have highlights and shadows. In split toning, you say, I want to pick a color, which is your hue, and a saturation level, which is how much of that hue do I want in either the highlights or the shadows. Color balance is different. It, uh, different. it does divide it by shadows, midtones, and highlights. So you have the extra midtones uh, component there that you don't have in split toning. But you don't really pick a color and a saturation level. This is really based on kind of a color wheel. So I'm going to pop over here and show you this. And I've done this in color balance videos in the past, but I keep this handy because I think it's useful to explain what I'm talking about. So this basically is um, kind of a color wheel. Um, uh, it talks about complementary colors. And so generally speaking, complementary colors are across each other in this diagram. So red is complementary to cyan, right? Green is complementary to magenta. And the blue here is complementary to yellow. So if you look at color balance, if you see there's a cyan red, and these sliders, by the way, are the same whether you're in shadows, midtones, or highlights. They're all the same. Let me bring that back. Um, but if you look here in shadows, right, cyan and red, right, cyan here and red, they're opposites, right? Next is magenta and green. Here's magenta and there's green. They're opposites. And then here's yellow and blue. There's yellow and there's blue. So they're opposite of each other on the color wheel, so they're complementary colors. So for me, color balance is more about the overall mix and balance of colors as opposed to split toning is more about, um, it's about something else. Um, I don't know, I don't know how to describe split toning other than just kind of saying what it is, which is highlights and shadows, pick your colors and your saturation level. Notice that you're not picking a saturation level in color balance, you're just picking colors uh, in the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights, and adjusting them or changing the mix or the balance, hence the name color balance. You're changing the balance or the mix of those colors in each of those three uh, types of tones, shadows, midtones, highlights. So the, the, the question may be, hey Jim, can I get the same thing as I got in split toning? And the answer is probably. Um, I never get exactly the same thing, but I can get pretty close. So if you recall up here, um, I'll turn it on so you can see it better. Shadows, I went kind of blue. Highlights, I went kind of peachy pink, right? So let's try that. So shadows, I'm going to go kind of blue. You can see the shadows are getting bluer and maybe a little cyan. So that's that's kind of blue. That looks good. I'm going to skip the midtones. It comes in handy. It's great in a lot of photos. And this one, this is a lot more shadow and highlight. So I'm going to go straight to highlight. And remember, because I was warmer in split toning, I'm going to go warmer here. So I'm going to take the away from the cyan and go more to the red to try to get more of that color in the sky. Uh, maybe I can do a little bit of purple. Um, it's magenta, but I like to call it kind of purple or, or whatever. Um, I like that a whole lot about color balance because that to me is kind of the tint, which is in the color temperature slider. Also in the develop filter, we have temperature and tint. That's basically tint because tint generally goes from green uh, to kind of that magenta, right? Um, and then the other highlights things, maybe I want to go a little bit yellow. Um, I don't think I want to go very much. I think I want to do more of that and more of that. And I've got a pretty damn good looking photo, I think. So there's that. Now freeze your mind on what that looks like. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to turn on this. Kind of similar. It's a little bit more intense on color balance, right? So freeze your mind on that one now. Turn it off and turn that. Uh, more intense colors. Note that I don't have a... Uh, a mount slider here or a balance slider. I mean, the entire filter is about balance because you're balancing between uh, complementary colors, right? You're balancing between shadows, highlights, uh, shadows, midtones, and highlights. You're doing a delicate dance or balance between 
these complementary colors that are across from each other on that color spectrum uh, wheel thing. Um, but you don't have an amount slider and you don't have a saturation slider like you do on split toning. So I'm a little bit more intense here. So I could take this down just to tone that down a little bit and that's gonna help you a little bit with the saturation. One thing I notice is that when you try to go more deeply into the blues in shadow, it just gets really dark, right? Um, and so I try not to go too dark there because I don't wanna overdo it. Um, Midtones, it's the same thing. The sliders are the same, as I said, whether it's shadows, midtones, or highlights, but you can get similar results. There's not one that's better than the other. They're both fabulous. I think it's, it's, um, not imperative because it depends on how you want to uh, edit. For me, it's imperative to understand and to use both and I mix it up. Um, sometimes I'll be doing a, a photo with split toning and I just don't really get where I want to get with it and I'll go get color balance and get it. Also, the opposite happens. Um, I might be trying to do something with color balance and not really be able to get there. Uh, I'll go get split toning and I'll have a better um, a better run at it. Um, another thing to think about is split toning. Uh, when you can, uh, and this is not really a good photo for it to be honest, but because you can uh, center, uh, kind of pick these uh, yellow sort of tones, one of the things you can do is kind of create um, a little bit of like a vintage kind of look. Um, more like a sepia look. So tell you what, let me see if I add black and white. Uh, how well is that gonna work? Uh, bring back a little bit of these reds and yellows. Uh, anyway, not really the best photo for it, so I'm gonna kinda cut that idea out here, but I've done that on cityscapes where I'm trying to create kind of a vintage look and using split toning uh, is actually a great way to do that. Not what I'm doing here. Here I'm more interested in kind of an artistic colorful, uh, beautiful sunset kind of edit. And I'm gonna get back where I, yeah, ooh, yeah, I like that. I just like that. I like that. Um, okay, so I hope that helps. Uh, does it help? I don't really know. Um, I just wanted to point out that split toning and color balance, they seem similar because both you have highlights and shadows and you get into some color mixing and you jack stuff around. Um, but in my opinion, they're very different. Can you get similar results? You can. But to me, it'll depend on the photo. Um, more often than not, in like a cityscape, especially if it's like a blue hour kind of thing, and if I've got a lot of like those yellow kind of street lights and things like that, I'll generally use color balance for that because I feel like it gives me a little bit more control because I have shadows, midtones, and highlights. And usually all I'm trying to do is change the mix of colors, not necessarily change a completely uh, different color. Uh, split toning, I'm more about that on sunsets. Uh, so this is a great example, although, you know, as you can see, I think I've got a fine looking sunset with color balance here too. I actually think I would pick the split toning one in this case, but that's just personal preference. So that was really it. I was just trying to walk through these two filters. They seem kind of similar at first blush, and in fact, they are kind of similar, but I also think there's a lot of differences, and the best thing to do is just experiment. Get in there, play around, and... Um, just take advantage of all the power and the fun that you can have in Luminar. Mess around with some photos, try it on some sunsets, try it on some cityscapes, try it on some landscapes, and see what you come up with because you have a lot of creative control over your colors in your photo with these two filters, and that's why I was talking about them. And I just wanted to do a little bit of a comparison. Hope it helps, my friends. I really appreciate you watching. You can leave me a comment down below. I'd, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe, share with your friends and uh, give it a thumbs up as well if you liked the video. I'll be back soon with more stuff. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Take care my friends, see you later and adios.